Hey guys, in this video we are going to talk about the introduction of infrared spectroscopy. As we know the infrared spectroscopy lies in the electromagnetic spectrum. So we have a electromagnetic spectrum arranged according to the energy of the radiations. So highest energy will have uh, at the first preference that is like UV, X-ray, then we have visible range, then comes the IR, then comes your microwaves, then radio waves. So we are talking about the energy at uh, less than the visible rad radiation. So we have here in the nature the sunlight is a natural source of IR. So along with uh, IR the sun also gives out UV radiation and visible radiation and also few of X-rays which can be filtered out and there is a lot of research going on in this matter whether X-ray is released from the uh, sun or not. But of course, uh, it is confirmed that UV visible and IR has been emitting from the sun. So that, that is a continuous source of supply. So based on this uh, nature, now we are going to apply this IR for studying the structure of the molecules. So what type of molecules? Yes, it is a chemical structure we are going to study. So we are going to only uh, focus on few fundamentals which is uh, which based on the IR spectroscopy we are going to uh, study the structures. So what is the main fundamental principle behind this? So if you see that uh, the main fundamental behind this is the first the structure has to absorb the photon, photon means the energy then only it starts vibrating. So we are going to measure the vibration how fast it is going to vibrate, how it is going to vibrate, whether it is stretching vibration or bending vibration based on the quantity of the energy absorbed by this particular molecule. So the main fundamental is absorption of photon which causes the molecule to vibrate. Next so coming to what type of vibration, so we can have depending upon the movement, so we have given example here, it has two movements, so one is stretching, example is HCl, there are only two atoms here. So stretching is the movement of atoms in the axis, so that uh, coming towards each other and moving away from each other, so this is called as stretching. So you can see here and stretching takes place you know at the time the very few seconds that is 10 to the power minus 15 seconds only the stretching will occur and it keeps on vibrating, so that is one type of uh, vibration. One more the major known is bending type, so example is water. Here the angle of uh, between the oxygen and hydrogen is bent and it starts moving like this so, so that the hydrogen comes together and moves away from each other. So this is called bending, so bond angle is changing. So when we compare stretching and bending, the stretching requires more energy because we are pulling two atoms far away with the bond length, so it requires more energy whereas bending requires very least energy, so that is the main uh, concept we are going to see in the coming slides. So you can see here, so a few types of uh, vibrations you can see in the slide. So in this first one is symmetric stretching, so if you see symmetric, uh, symmetric uh, stretching, so you can see uh, central atom is fixed, the other two atoms are moving away from the central atom together, so this is called as symmetric stretching. Now what is asymmetric stretching, if you see asymmetric stretching one atom is coming towards the central atom, another is going away from other, so it is happening the vibration, one is coming to go, uh, towards the central, another is going away from the central, so this type of stretching is called as asymmetric stretching. Now if you go for next rocking, so you can see has a rock show we uh, rock our hand, so same way both atoms attached to central atom moves together on the axis itself. Next is scissoring, so has the scissor moves the two atoms are moving towards each other and away from each other, so this is the movement of scissor, so we call it as scissoring. Next is twisting, so if you see twisting, one atom is going away from us and coming towards us, other one is vice versa, so it is happening one away going away, coming towards us, so it is happening, so this kind of uh, vibration is called as twisting. Next is wagging, you can see in wagging both the atoms are coming towards us and, the, and going back to and fro, so it is going uh, to, coming towards us. So it is coming out of the plane and uh, in plane, so this is happening because of wagging, wagging type of vibration. So these vibrations will give different different frequencies, so this frequency will be seen in the spectrum. So based on this uh, 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 vi vibration it requires different different energies, so I can say energy is quantized, so based on this vibration we can get 
peaks in the spectra spectrum. So, what is molecular vibrations? So, molecular vibrations from where the energy comes. So, as I said, energy is quantized uh, only when the molecule is, is going to absorb the energy, then only it starts vibration. Until then, whatever IR you are applying uh, starting to end, only a, a certain quantity of energy when it absorbed only it starts vibrating. So, I can say it is called uh, vibration is uh, vibration energy is quantized. So, I have a molecule in the ground state, okay, it is not, uh, not even vibrating, no exposure to IR. Now, we have a vibration state of energy on the axis of Y. So, you can see now I have shown one more uh, exerted level. So, now we require to pass IR so that the ground state will be no longer uh, inactive and as soon as the IR is absorbed, it starts vibrating and it goes to exit state. So, that energy that is given by E1 that is the ground state, E2 is the exit state that gives the delta E the energy difference and the H is the Planck's constant and U is the frequency. So, we know the delta E and H hence we can calculate the stretching frequency. So, this stretching frequency is quantized it depends upon the energy what we supply. So, as I said for bond vibration delta E is depending upon the bond. So, what type of bond it is? So, delta E is directly proportional to what type of bond between two atoms and also it requires minimum of 5 kilocalorie of calorie per mole of energy. So, IR will supply this much of energy then only it is going to get excited. Then lower energy so you can see this energy is less than the red light what we see in the daily life and that is of course the infrared photons is applied here for this excitation. So, you can see one example here. So, this uh, students are excited. Uh, not excited, you can see they are seeing us, they are waiting for some uh, response from the teacher is going to announce something. So, they are in the ground state now. So, you can see they are just looking at us. So, as soon as I start announcing something, they are excited means the atoms, if I compare this to atoms, the student, the atoms will be in the ground state, there will be no, no uh, motion here. So, as soon as I start announcing uh, good news, then automatically you can see the atoms are rotating in their own axis. So, the energy whatever is I apply is enough is enough to just rotate them in the axis. Okay? They are not vibrating, just they are rotating. You can see they are excited now, uh, they are just uh, feeling excited. So, as soon as I uh, announce the announcement that is the good news, then automatically all starts vibrating. So, this what we see is uh, vibration. So, ultimately they were quiet. So, whenever I gave a announcement that is high energy, then only they started vibrating. So, I can say energy is quantized. <coughs> so, coming to uh, analysis of the spectrum, we have infrared spectrum. So, in this infrared uh, uh, spectrum, you can see I have uh, shown a graph uh, wavelength in the x axis and intensity on the y axis. So, that uh, x axis depending upon the stretching frequency uh, and it depends upon the it is proportional to the photon energy. So, photon energy means as I said energy what you apply depending upon the energy itself we get the peak. So, you can see towards the right side of the graph it requires more energy towards the left side of the graph it requires less energy. So, I can say towards the right side of the graph it is stretching frequency what you are seeing and towards the left side from at least from 1400 we can see bending region 1400 to 400. So, that wave number is about for bending and above 1400 to 4000 is of stretching it requires more energy. So, whatever peak comes uh, above 4400 is of stretching and below that is of bending vibrations. And as you see that some are very small peak some are very big peak why is that so? It depends upon the number of photon absorbed. So, more the number of photon absorbed, you get more intense peak. So, you can see here, if the number of photon is less, then automatically the peak is less. <coughs> so, you can see the number of photon is uh, higher, so we get the high peak. Yeah. So, uh, as you see this uh, spectrum, we are going to continue in the next class, uh, what is about how this peak is going to come and how this dipole is going to uh, show this uh, peaks in the graph. Thank you very much.